Hello fellow crafters. My name is Katerina and I am the founder of Fancy Yarns Australia. This is our third episode in our series on how to choose the right yarn for your next project. In this episode, we're delving into the fascinating realms of yarn weight and gauge. Understanding these concepts is like having a magic key to unlock the full potential of your projects. Let's jump right in. Yarn weight is more than just a number on the label. It determines the thickness of your yarn and plays a crucial role in achieving the desired look and feel of your project. Yarn weights range from the delicate lace to the cozy bulky. Each has its own unique characteristics, affecting the final appearance and functionality of your creation. In the UK and Australia, you might come across terms like two-ply, four-ply, and so on. In the US, these are commonly referred to as lace weight, fingering, and so forth. One-ply yarns are also known as cobweb lace yarns. I don't use these much beyond holding alongside another yarn. One of my favorite cobweb lace yarns is Glitter Deluxe, which we currently have available in the Fancy Yarns online store. It's fine enough not to overtake the appearance of the yarn you are working with, but is just thick enough to give your work a little sparkle. Two-ply yarns are also known as lace weight yarns. These yarns are perfect for very delicate lace work, including beautiful Shetland lace and airy shawls and scarves with a gorgeous drape. One of our favorite lace weight yarns at Fancy Yarns Australia is Juniper Moon Farms Findlay. Now, this is where it gets confusing. In Australia, we use the terms three ply, four ply and five ply to refer to two yarn weights in the UK and two in the US. In the US, three ply is known as fingering weight yarn. The US term fingering weight yarn also refers to four ply yarn. You may hear the terms light fingering weight yarn, which can often include three ply yarn. In Australia, we also have five ply yarn, which is still considered four ply yarn in the UK. In the US, five ply is known as sport weight yarn. Four ply yarn is great for socks and shawls. It is very versatile yarn. It can be used to create garments as well, but please note that these take considerably longer when using a four ply yarn. However, the yarn does work up beautifully, especially when working in lace. One of the reasons everyone loves four ply is its ability to drape gracefully. Four ply is great for socks as the stitches are fine enough to create a beautiful definition on a smaller item, such as a sock. We have a huge range of sock yarns available at Fancy Yarns Australia, including from local Canberra-based dyer Obsession Yarns. Now for my all-time favorite yarn weight, five ply. Five ply, also known as sport weight, is the most versatile yarn weight in my opinion. It's a little bit weightier than four ply, so it makes it quicker to knit, but it isn't as thick as eight ply, so it can work up more intricately. Our top selling five ply is Dungarees Paint, spun from recycled jeans. This is a favorite yarn for creating stunning summer tops like the one I'm wearing right now. Eight ply, also known as DK or double knit, was the very first yarn weight I started knitting with. It's a great in-between yarn, not too fine, not too bulky. DK is great for garments as it knits up quickly, but is fine enough to create a garment with a beautiful fit. We have a few really popular eight ply yarns, including recycled tweed. This is a recycled wool poly blend made from 100% recycled materials. Comes in a range of colors and is so easy to work with. Next is 10 ply yarn, also known as worsted weight or iron weight. This is a bit bulkier, which means projects work up a little more quickly. It's a fun yarn to work with and still shows some interesting designs without it getting too lost in the chunkiness of the yarn. Myrtle is a 10 ply yarn available in our store spun from 100% eucalyptus fibers. This yarn is incredibly soft and has so many other amazing properties, including being antibacterial, compostable, and sustainable. Anything above 12 ply yarn is getting into the bulky, super bulky territory. This weight of yarn is great for really warm projects. It tends to be more commonly found in wool than in cotton. Some bulky and super bulky yarns we have in store are the Heal the Wool range from Wool in the Gang, made from 100% upcycled wool. Now that we've covered different yarn weights, let's talk about some tips around yarn weight. Firstly, always check your yarn label to find out your yarn's weight, suggested needle or hook size, and recommended gauge. What is gauge? 
Simply put, gauge is the number of stitches and rows you need to achieve a specific measurement in your project. The gauge is usually measured over 10 centimeters or four inches in both length and width. The gauge is crucial because it ensures your project matches the intended size and proportions. Deviating from the recommended gauge can lead to a project that doesn't fit as expected. Checking your gauge and the pattern requirements is super important. For example, if you are working with cotton, Check your gauge after washing and hanging your swatch because it will tell you how much your swatch might lose elasticity. If you are using wool, check your gauge after washing and blocking. If you are working in a particular pattern, test your gauge over that pattern. Don't just test it over stocking stitch or single crochet. Of course, gauge is more important in some patterns than in others. I know there are some people who will fully test a swatch for every project. For scarves and shawls, I tend to wing it a little bit because I can usually guess the approximate gauge. And for me, the precise gauge isn't too important. This is just my personal way of doing it though. If you fully test your gauge for every project, all the power to you. So how do you achieve the right gauge? Well, it often involves adjusting your needle or hook size. If your stitches are too loose, try a smaller size. If they're too tight, go up a size. I recommend creating a gauge swatch to test your tension before diving into your main project. It's a small effort that can save you from major headaches later. But what if you can't match the gauge exactly? Fear not, my fellow crafters. This is where a bit of math can come to the rescue. Calculate the difference between your achieved gauge and the pattern's gauge. Then adjust your project stitch or row count accordingly. This might mean adding or subtracting a few stitches or rows, but it allows you to customize your project to fit your unique tension. Remember, it's okay to experiment and make adjustments. This is your creation and it should reflect your personal touch. We'd love to hear what your favorite yarn weight is to work with. Pop your answer in the comment section below. Now that we've demystified yarn, weight, and gauge, in our next episode, we'll explore the colorful world of choosing the perfect color for your project. Stay tuned for some tips and tricks to make your creations truly shine. If you found this episode helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Fancy Yarns Australia YouTube channel for more crafting wisdom. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Fancy Yarns Oz. You can also subscribe to our newsletter on our website at www.fancyyarns.com.au. We're coming to the end of 2023, so I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has supported us this year. We so appreciate you coming on this yarntastic journey with us. Have a safe and happy holiday season, and we look forward to seeing you all in 2024.